Bridget Riley is a very well-known artist that was born in 1931 in London, England. Bridget earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in 1955 at the Royal College of Art in London. By 1960, Bridget started to experiment with optical effects in her paintings. Op art, or optical art, is a form of abstract art that gives the illusion of movement by the precise use of pattern or color. Look at this painting. Does it make your eyes feel funny? When Bridget Riley first exhibited her black and white abstract paintings in the 1960s, people were amazed at how they seemed to move. It was like she was painting with electricity and the patterns were live wires. This style of painting is known as op art. Op artists put colors, shapes, and patterns together in clever ways to create optical illusions. These are just some of the examples of Bridget Riley's many works of art. Bridget Riley still lives in London, England, and at 89 years old, still continues to paint and create beautiful art. To create our Bridget Riley inspired design, you'll need some white paper, a pencil, and either a pen or a black marker. So here's a finished example of an abstract design made from just repetitive lines that gives an optical effect, an optical illusion effect, a modified one, I would say, but it looks like the cylinders get larger and then go into the distance, it gets smaller, and it's very easy to do. So we're gonna start out with some plain white paper and just a Sharpie pen. Riddle Riley loved to use repetitive lines in her artwork, and just to make these tubular shapes, I'm gonna show you slowly and you're gonna follow my pen on how we can make the shape by just repeating the line, look like it's growing or getting larger and closer up and then further into the distance as it gets smaller. So it's almost like a half of a, it's like a rainbow shape. You're gonna make, or an upside down U. And you start with just one loop. Then you touch the top of that loop and, and you start another line and then you connect it to the other side. Now, if I continue to do this, again, I'm gonna to touch the top of that loop. And I'm just using, going right onto this in black marker. And I touch it, and now, if you can see, it looks like my shape is getting smaller. So I'm going on each, I'm keeping my lines close together, trying to keep them spaced somewhat distance the same, but I'm touching the top of each loop. Now this might take a little practice, but as you can see, my shape is getting smaller. Now, to make it larger, I'm gonna start at the very beginning of that loop and loop it around to the beginning again. I'm gonna start at the same starting point, loop it around to the beginning again. And I'm gonna continue doing this until my shape gets larger. And all I'm doing is repeating the line and as you do this you could see it's creating a larger tube now I might want my shape to go off to the side remember this is abstract art this is not representing any kind of reality we're just making a design so I'm gonna have mine go to the right and get smaller again because I want it to look like it's going into the distance so I'm just touching each loop now if you need to practice this you have to make sure that your loops connect. So for instance, if I made a loop on this, this is just my scrap paper here. If I started making the loop and I didn't connect them, 
I'm gonna be making a rainbow shape and it's not gonna give the same effect. When you touch the top of the loop, and you touch the top of the next one and you connect it so it looks like one shape. So either side you connect and you keep practicing. Use a piece of scrap paper first in case you make a mistake like this down here. Just practice with it. If you start it closer in the middle, if you start your loop closer in the middle, then it's gonna get smaller. If you start it towards the beginning points, then you can make it gradually get bigger. See, I'm going back to that starting point. So I'm gonna continue making these loops. Now, just to show you, as I'm getting smaller and smaller, sometimes they'll get so small they'll disappear. So you can either stop it right there or you can add another one. I'm gonna actually connect another cylinder shape off this one, but you don't wanna overlap your lines. So if I connect another one, I'm not gonna draw on top of that. I'm gonna leave those lines the way they are. I'm gonna just make another one coming off the side here. And I'm just repeating the lines and repeating the shape and doing this right with marker. And I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna keep drawing this until my whole page is filled up with these really cool cylinder shapes. So I'm gonna continue on and let's see. I could fill my whole page up. Now it's really starting to get an abstract design. So I could even flip my page upside down or I can continue. Now remember, none of my lines crossed. So I continue to touch the top of each loop, whether I started at the side or I made a turn or I made them disappear into space. Because remember, the smaller they get, gives the effect that they're going farther away into the distance. So I'm gonna start even another one. I can turn my paper and maybe I'll start one in the corner here. I'm gonna start with the loop. I'm gonna to touch the top of that loop and the side of that one. And I'm gonna make this come out larger. And then I wanna again make a turn. So if I make a turn, I'm gonna start maybe closer to this side here and bring it all the way around. And then I'll start the loop touching the top here and bring that all the way around. Now I'm kind of turning my loop to the right. You're gonna turn yours any direction you want. Again, this is abstract art. There is no wrong way to make this design. As long as you use repetitive lines, just like Bridget Riley, and you create what you think is gonna look really good. But now again, I'm not crossing over those lines. I'm stopping when I get to there. We don't want to cross over any lines. Keep each loop clean and stop when you get to the next shape. So if I'm gonna run it, let's say I'm gonna keep going here and I'm gonna run it into this other one. I'm going to stop right when I get there and make that stop so it looks like it's going in the distance. And maybe I'll make one more coming off the side here. I can even start it on the side of this one. Here's a loop. I'm gonna take another loop and add it like that. And you could fill up your page as much as you like. Once you think you have your design, and it's all done. I'm gonna make this get really small now. Go into the distance. So I think that looks pretty good. The next step is to shade it. So to make these really look like they're going into outer space, we're gonna make the tops have highlights as if they're coming and protruding at us and the sides will be shaded in. So again, you take the side of your pencil and you hold it sideways so you get a really soft lead on there. And then I would shade either side of these tubular shapes so that it gives it a little more definition. You leave the centers. Remember when you shade, you show all the values of gray. So it gets lighter, lighter, lighter to the center and really, really dark on the side. And the same thing on this side of each shape. I'm almost going in the, in the same direction as the tube itself so that you can even erase if you feel like or use your finger to blend. I like to use my finger to blend it up and you can see it's giving it a little more definition and it's almost highlighting the center. You can even take your eraser and really make that pop in the center and all the shadows will then make it look even more three-dimensional. 
I'm going to shade the rest of these in. Okay, so we did a quick shading and really try to emphasize the different values of black and the different shades you can get out of your pencil. And again, if you press really hard with the side, you can get these dark, uh, nice shades here. And then the middle of this tube is highlighted. So even if you, you shaded too much or you blended too much, you can use your eraser and go through it again to just show those highlights and it's gonna make it look even more three-dimensional. So here is my Bridget Riley inspired artwork an abstract design giving an optical illusion that things are getting smaller or going out into space and getting larger just by using black marker and some pencil for highlights and shadows. Here's my example from earlier. And also another sample I had, if you have colored markers and some colored pencils at home, doing the same thing just with some color. I hope you all enjoyed my video today. Don't forget to send me a picture.